Welcome to Hollywood. The Armed Forces Radio and Television Service brings you the Hollywood Radio Theater, starring Dorothy McGuire and Frank Lovejoy in Mother Didn't Tell Me. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. In tonight's play, Mother Didn't Tell Me, our domestic problem concerns a doctor's young bride who is eager to be a perfect wife, but is frustrated by her lack of medical knowledge and the appearance in her husband's office of an attractive feminine associate. And as our stars of this modern comedy drama from 20th Century Fox, we have Dorothy McGuire and Frank Lovejoy. Now, act one of Mother Didn't Tell Me. Starring Dorothy McGuire as Jane and Frank Lovejoy as Bill. If that rainstorm hadn't drenched the city for five whole days and nights, this story might never have happened. And if Jane Morgan hadn't stubbornly walked to work day after day through all that downpour, she might never have found herself in the reception room of William Wright, M.D. <coughs> Your address, Miss Morgan? 2795 West 9th Street, Apartment 2. <coughs> Your telephone? Fitzroy, 5103. Occupation? I'm with an advertising company. <coughs> All right, if you'll follow me, Miss Morgan. <coughs> uh, sit down here. The doctor will be with you in just a moment. Thank you. Uh, Miss Morgan is waiting, doctor. I'll be right out as soon as I check this x-ray. Yes, doctor. <coughs> quite a cough, Miss Morgan. W what? That cough, is that why you're here? Yes, it started with a cold, but it's been getting worse all week. Do you think it might be something serious? It might to a bull moose. <laughs> By the way, how'd you happen to come to me? A girlfriend of mine recommended you. Betty Duran? Betty Duran? Oh, it was two or three years ago, and I've never had anything wrong until now. I remember that she said that you were so kind and fatherly. Now, if you'll take off your coat. You are Dr. Wright. Uh-huh. Remove your coat, please. Oh, yes. And your blouse. My blouse? Oh, no, I can't. You can't? Oh, I couldn't. I, I mean, Betty said you were so... But but you aren't at all. I mean, why are you so young? Well, the doctor right your friend was talking about was my father. When he died, I took over his practice. Oh, I see. You think you could open your mouth and put out your tongue? Oh, yes. Good. I'll say ah. Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> ah. That's what I said. <laughs> and so boy meets girl, or rather, doctor meets inflamed throat and girl. Well, girl meets two tablespoons of cough syrup on the hour every hour. <coughs> 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 It's a long, lonely evening for Jane Morgan, that is, until she curls up with a good book, The Telephone Directory. Mm -hmm. There it is. Dr. Wright's residence. Dr. William Wright? Oh, this is Miss Evans of the Daily Mirror. Is this Mrs. Wright? Yes, this is Mrs. Wright. Oh. Oh, uh, well, well, you see, we're conducting a poll among doctors' wives to see, quote, do doctors make good husbands, unquote. Well, I happen to be a doctor's widow. And if this is in regard to my son, his wife can't be quoted because he hasn't any wife, quote or unquote. Oh, he hasn't. Oh, I beg your pardon, and thank you so much. 
Thank you very much. Hello. Dr. Wright? Uh, this is he speaking. Oh, well, this is Jane Morgan. And you asked me to call you if I felt worse. Could you come right over, right away? I feel just terrible. <laughs> The doors are locked out there. Miss Morgan? Miss Morgan? Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor. I was changing. Haven't you got anything heavier you could wear? Well, yes, but I I, I like this better. That's a pneumonia trap. You mean you don't like it? Leave it back in the bed. But, Doctor... All right, now. Disinfectant at twenty dollars an ounce. Hold out your wrist, please. Well, uh, oh, excuse me. You don't feel as if you have a fever. Your pulse seems all right. Well, you talk as if that's bad. You told me you were feeling worse. Well, I, I was, but that was half an hour ago. I'm sorry if I disappointed you. Mm-hmm. How's your car? Oh, it's much better. In fact, if you'll let me, I'll go back to work tomorrow. Well, that depends. What kind of work? Radio promotion. You know, writing stuff for an advertising company. I see. Yes, I guess you'll be up to that. Meanwhile, you better get a good night's sleep and give me a call in a day or so and let me know how you're doing. Doctor? Yes? I'd much prefer it if you'd call me. All right. Good night. Good night, Doctor. Uh, Miss Morgan? Yes? Dinner Thursday? Mm-hmm. Thank you, Doctor. Now, well, good night. Good night. Uh, and I do like those, uh, pajamas. Good night. <laughs> I can't imagine where in the world we're eating. I don't know this district at all. Well, I have a confession to make. Yes? Uh, would you mind if I made one house call before dinner? It would take over five minutes. Oh, why not at all? Is this the place? Yeah. Only five minutes. Try the radio if you like. All right. <laughs> Solid jive with your old pal Peter Pepper. And when I say solid, I mean we've got platters so hot the shellac is bubbling. favor, please. Like what? Well, I'm waiting for a gentleman to come out of that, that apartment house over there. He's a doctor and he'll be carrying a black bag. Yeah, so? Well, if you see him, would you tell him that I've gone for some cigarettes at the drugstore across the street? Okay, a guy with a black bag, mm-hmm. huh? Like, uh, maybe the one getting out of that coop or getting into the coop right now? What? Oh, good heaven! Bill! Bill! Doctor right! Doctor! Oh, Doctor! <laughs> Dr. Wright, I'll bet. Go on. Bring as long as you want. See if I'll let you in. Jane? Jane? I thought I locked my front door. Oh, but you didn't. Jane, I'm sorry I was late. Late? 
Is that all you're sorry about? It's perfectly all right, I suppose, to drive off without me, letting me chase after your car like a mongrel dog, barking my head off. No, I thought you'd gone. Thought you got tired of waiting and gone home. And if you thought that, why didn't you come straight here? That was over two hours ago. Well, I got an emergency call while I was in the apartment, and when I came out, I didn't see you. Well, I just went up the street for some cigarettes. Oh, well, I'm really sorry. You smell something burning? What? Oh, my bacon and eggs. Now, see what you've done. Oh, yeah, I, I'm sorry again. You got any more eggs? Yes. And I think I've got some bacon, too. Okay, then leave the rest to me. Well, don't you think that I ought to... Yeah, I do definitely. You ought to change out of that bathroom and take the curlers out of your hair. <laughs> going to the Oak Room? Oh, I had a table all reserved. It's the only place in town where a head waiter recognizes me. The only trouble is he recognizes me as Mr. Drudnick. Who's Mr. Drudnick? I don't know. Every time he calls me Drudnick, I try to tell him my correct name. I say, it's right. He grins and say, yeah, I never forget a name. That's right, Mr. Drudnick. <laughs> Something wrong? No. No, I was just wondering where you learned to be such a good cook. My mother taught me. She believes every man should be completely self-sufficient. Completely? Uh, but she keeps house for you, doesn't she? How'd you know? Oh, I, uh, just womanly intuition. Uh-huh. Where are your folks? They were killed in an accident about five years ago. Ever since then you've been on your own? Mm-hmm. Lonely, isn't it? Mm-hmm, sometimes. But not now? No, not now. Oh, darn. Hello? Yes? Yes, he is. Bill? Oh, I'm sorry. I always have to leave a number where I can be reached. Uh, Dr. Wright speaking. Oh, yes, Mrs. Oshenke. <laughs> now, you must take my word for it. Mr. Oshenke isn't dying. If you'll just give him one or two of those little brown pills. It... All right, Mrs. Oshanky, I'll be there in about ten minutes. What's wrong with Mr. Oshanky? His wife. <laughs> as long as I can remember, that man's been dying on an average of four nights a week. Let me see. Do I have an overcoat? Yes, here it is. How about tomorrow night? <laughs> All right. And Friday night? Possibly. And Saturday night? If you'll include Sunday night. That's a deal. <laughs> I remember now, don't laugh when the head waiter calls me Mr. Drudnick. I promise. Why are we stopping? Just a quick house call. Oh, no, you don't. But I'll be back in five You're minutes. right. I refuse to spend the best evenings of my life sitting alone in a car. Unless... Unless what? Unless you assure me right here and now that your intentions are serious. Oh. Oh, you mean marriage. I do. Okay, I was going to ask you tonight anyway. You were? Sure. When I get back, remind me to show you the ring. Bill! Yeah. Well, doesn't this at least rate a tear? Oh, sure. Okay, I'll be back in five minutes. Hmm. Five minutes. Pepper back for another 60 minutes of solid jive. It's a darling house, Bill. It looks just like some place that you live. Well, it was really Mother's choice. We bought it after Dad died. Oh, Bill, would you wait just a moment? Was something wrong? Yes. I guess I feel like an actress would on an opening night. I do so want to make a good impression on your mother. Oh, silly. There isn't a thing to worry about. Well, I, I just wish your mother hadn't gone to all that trouble of fixing dinner. Mother? Mother? Oh, 
Bill, I'm so sorry. I tried to reach you at the office. Why, is something wrong? And this is Jane, of course. Oh, I'm so glad to meet you, Mrs. Wright. Mother, you said you tried to reach me. Oh, yes. I I started to cook dinner, and then one of those awful headaches started. I I haven't been able to do a thing. But perhaps I can fix it now, if, if you don't mind a late dinner. Oh, oh, we wouldn't think of it, Mrs. Wright. Why, Bill and I can eat out. Yes, you're going to bed where you belong. I'll go get your peanut butter. My dear, I'm going to have to come right to the point. You're rushing into this marriage too quickly. Oh, Mrs. Wright. You have no idea what it is to be a doctor's wife. What's so unusual about a doctor? He's a man. Ah, but of a special breed. And only a woman of a special breed can make him happy. My dear, I'm only trying to help you. Well, I'd like to believe that, Mrs. Wright. But if Bill and I should go ahead, if we marry, there will be no interference from me. Thank you. By the way, has Bill mentioned Helen? Helen? Helen Porter. But I can see that he hasn't. Well, perhaps it's best that way. Mrs. Wright, I'm sure that whenever Bill is... Yeah, ready... Mother, you take this tablet, and that, if does, that doesn't work, you try another one in an hour, and you'll get into bed right now. Yes, dear. You'll be home early, won't you? I doubt it. Good night, Mrs. Wright. Good night. Oh, Jane. Yes? Remember woman to woman? All right. Woman to woman. Hmm. Secrets already? Hmm. Secrets already. Good night, my dear. Good night, Mother. Jane, what is it? What is what? Well, something's come over you. I noticed it the moment I came back into the room. Is it something Mother said? Some of that uh, woman to woman stuff? Yes, Bill. It was. Well? Oh, there's only one thing that matters, Bill. One thing I've just got to know. Do you really love me? I mean, enough to marry me and and to forget and forsake all others? That's part of the marriage vow, isn't it, honey? Of course I'm willing. Oh, thank you, darling. And as long as I know that, I can take whatever comes. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of Mother Didn't Tell Me, starring Dorothy McGuire as Jane and Frank Lovejoy as Bill. A few days later, Jane and Bill became Dr. and Mrs. William Wright. After the ceremony, the wedding party rushed Jane and Bill to the depot just in time to push them aboard the train for Detroit. Yes, that's right. I said Detroit. Hmm. No, not. Yeah. Away from telephones and patients for two glorious weeks. Bill, how did you happen to pick Detroit? Oh, you'll love it, honey. Well, I'm sure I will, but... How about a kiss? Hmm? <laughs> Darling, just how was it that you happened to pick Detroit for our honeymoon? Well, <laughs> see, there's going to be a convention there. Convention? Yeah, yeah, a medical convention. See, I thought it wouldn't hurt to have something to do on our honeymoon. <laughs> you won't mind too much. Oh, of course not. Good. Oh, boy, I'll feel human again when I get off these new shoes. Bill? Yeah. Who is Helen? Helen? Yes, Helen Porter. Hmm. My mother told you about her, huh? Not really. That's what I want you to do. Well, it's nothing much to tell. Helen Porter worked in my office to get enough money to complete her medical school. I promised when she finished her internship, I'd take her into my office as my associate. Why did you promise that? Oh, well, because... I like to see her get a good start, and besides, she's a brilliant woman. And attractive? <laughs> oh, so that's it. If you mean, was I ever interested in her, the answer is no. 
And does she know that? Oh, darling, what do we care? She isn't even in town. She's studying in the East. She won't be back for two whole years. Yes, who is it? The doctor. Oh, just a second. Dr. William Wright? Yeah. A medical doctor? That's right. Good. We had you down on our passenger list, but I wasn't sure. There's a woman up in the next car. Had some sort of a heart spell, we think. Oh, all right. I'll be right with you. Let me get my bag. Oh, Bill! Surely you aren't the only doctor on the train. Oh, well, I'm the handiest. I'll be back as soon as I can. Oh, Bill! <laughs> No more argument, Jane. I want you to come inside with me on this house call. But why? The very first hour we get back in town, why must we... Because Mr. and Mrs. O'Shanky want to meet you, dear. They live here? In this... this mansion? Welcome home, children. Oh, Mrs. Wright. Hi, Mother. Everything okay? Yes. I'm on my way back to the house right now to bring over the rest of your suit. I'll be back in a few minutes. Oh, Bill, I... What, what, Suppose what you it? step inside and see. Now, go on, inside. Bill... Yeah. The old Shankies don't live here. No, no, we do. What? About at least for three months. Completely furnished house, free for nothing, thanks to one of my GPs. GP? Otherwise known to the trade as a grateful patient. Hello, Pete. Good to see you. Uh, Darling, you remember Pete Roberts, oh, don't you? Of course. You were in our wedding party. That's you know? right. Obstetrician extraordinary at your service. Uh, at least I hope to be. Oh, well, goodness, don't rush it. Come on, Bill. Let's build some drinks. Sure. Hi down there. How about giving me a hand? Hmm? What? I'm Maggie, Pete's wife. Oh. Come on upstairs and tell me how you want your things unpacked. Right away. You look like you just stepped off a merry-go-round going full tilt. Oh, I feel it, too. This beautiful house and deal and all our wonderful friends. Oh, I've got so much to live up to. Uh-uh, none of that. Oh, I mean it. I'm going to dedicate my life to Bill and his work. His life is medicine, and my life will be medicine. Mm, I wish I had a bedroom like this. I think you'll find all of your belongings here. Pete and I moved them over from your apartment. Oh. Hmm. I don't see any of my books. Books? Yes, medical books. I bought them as soon as Bill and I got engaged. You read medical books? Well, certainly. I'm studying so that when Bill comes home in the evening, I'll be able to sit and discuss his work intelligently with him. For instance, do you know that that peptic ulcer is the sharply demarcated loss of tissue which begins in the duodema mucosa and extends to the submucosa? <coughs> hmm. Well, what's wrong? Uh, nothing, honey. Nothing that time won't cure. <laughs> Mrs. Todd, this is Jane Wright. Yes, I'm hoping that you and Dr. Todd can come for cocktails and dinner tomorrow evening. Thank you, Mrs. Hamilton. Then I'll be expecting you and Doctor. But Maggie, it's Bill's birthday. Pete's just got to bring you. Going all right, Maggie? Look, honey, just relax. Oh, well, I wish all the men wouldn't bunch up together at one end of the room. I feel I'm missing out on things. You aren't. They're just talking medicine. Well, then, I guess I can, too. Jane, no, come back here. Well, oh, oh, oh. Sure, it was a peptic ulcer. Mm. No two ways about it. Well, yeah. well I was a yes, I, I read a report by Dodson on an endocarditis case. Oh, but... speaking of ulcers, gentlemen... I understand that they result from embolism of the gastric juices of mucosa. <laughs> Darling, how's dinner coming along? We'll be ready in ten minutes. Fine. Uh, Frank, uh, tell us about that repair of the diaphragm in which there was a penetrating ulcer. Well, as I remember it... Uh, ulcers result from the embolism of the gastric mucosa. <laughs> Child, is there something on your mind? <laughs> Well, well what, I beg your pardon? Well, why are you quoting a discarded theory from an obviously dated medical book? Dated? 
From what you've memorized, it sounds as if it was printed about 1905. Oh. Darling, how about getting me a refill right away? Oh, uh, yeah, yes, dear. Oh, I don't intend to interfere in my son's life. But I can't help but think how different things might have been. <clears throat> Mother? Oh. Oh, why, Jane, was there something? Well, I just wanted to ask if you'd like another cocktail. Oh, thank you. Yes. I'll answer it, dear. Oh, that's okay, honey. I got it. Hello? Yes, this is Dr. Wright. Bill, if that's a patient wanting me... Oh, I see. Oh, certainly. I'll be right over. Bill, you can't. It's your birthday. I'm sorry, darling. It's an emergency. Save a piece of cake for me. Bill! See what I mean, honey? Welcome to the Royal Order of Neglected Wives. Maggie, you're a doctor's wife. How am I going to put in my time? I'll die of loneliness. What do I do? Well, there's one solution that's worked since the beginning of time. Have a baby. Jane? The way? Yes. I'm terribly sorry, dear. I had to go to the hospital. It doesn't matter. Mm. I bet it was a great party. Until all the men left. The phone kept ringing for one doctor after another. Oh, Jane, you've been crying? Well, I only tried to talk about medicine so you'd be proud of me. Oh, darling. I read book after book so I could show your friend and your mother that I'm as intelligent and good for you as Helen Porter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's what that was all about. All right, now let's forget <laughs> Helen Porter. Turn on the light. I want to show you some photographs. What kind of photographs? Our new house, the one we just bought. Bill! Yeah, I got it from another grateful patient. He showed me these snapshots. Said he was putting the house on the market tomorrow, but for me, he'd cut the price way down. So I gave him a check before he could change his mind. You mean you haven't even seen the house? Well, I didn't have time, darling, but the very first thing tomorrow. Yes, the very first thing. <laughs> This door seems to be stuck. You're sure this is the right address? Of course I am. Somehow, the house looked bigger in the photograph. And the paint wasn't peeling. Guess I'll have to force this door. Enter, madame. Where's the furniture? Hmm, I don't know. I could have sworn the man said it went with the place. Well, maybe it did, but... Everything else is certainly real gone. Hey, the kitchen looks pretty good. See, you got a nice view of the garden. What was that? I think a window shutter fell off. <laughs> oh, notice that sink, dear. That's a nice double one. Hmm, I wonder about the water pipe. Pipes of pandemonium. Well, I'm pretty handy with tools, honey. I'll get the thing fixed up. And can you build furniture, too? Well, not the kind we want. That down payment took almost every cent in the bank. Oh, not every cent. I've got a little in my savings account, enough to buy a stove and a refrigerator and a bed. What else do we need? Nothing. Just each other. I thought Bill was going to make that flower box for you. What do you do with these Sundays? Just what your husband does, dear. Sorry, honey, the hospital wants me right away. Jane, get down off that ladder. Oh, I'm glad you're home, Bill. I want you to do something. Get off that ladder, do you hear? That's no place for a woman who's going to have a baby. Bill. The test just came through, it's for sure. Bill? Bill? Oh. Darling? Wake up. Why, why, 
What's the... I, I, I think it's now. Okay, Bill. I can see you for five minutes. Thanks, Pete. Darling? Oh, dear. Is everything all right? Everything. It makes it seem so confused. One told me it was a boy, and the other said it was a girl. Well, they're both right. It's twins. <laughs> oh, dear, look. Mary's smiling at me. Oh, that's nothing. Tommy laughed right out loud at me. Bill, you know I invited Maggie and Pete for 6 o'clock. Uh, sure, I know, but I have to drive out to the airport. The airport? Why? Uh, here, I'll read you the telegram. Uh, arriving 6.45 p.m., please be at airport to welcome your new associate, signed Helen. Helen Porter? Uh, Bill, I do want to go with you. Oh, but you can't. You have to be there for Maggie and Pete. All right. But you pick up Helen and bring her back here to the house. Well, she'll probably be exhausted. I want to meet her, Bill, tonight. Hi, Jane. Surprise, surprise. Oh, well, not really, Maggie. I've been expecting you and Pete. Oh, Pete's stuck at the hospital, dear. But look what I've brought in his place. Come on in, you gorgeous hunk of muscle. Oh. Jane Rice meets Bruce Gordon. Well, hello there. Well, uh, how do you do, Mr. Gordon? Bruce is an old schoolmate of Pete. He just returned from the wilds of... Uh, where was it, Bruce? Valley. The island of Valley in the South Seas. Oh, how interesting. Well, suppose we go into the living room. Bill won't be home for a while, so I'll get the cocktails if you'll excuse me. Mrs. Wright, wait. Yes, Mr. Gordon? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. What is? The way you walk. Oh. I, I haven't seen a woman walk like that since I left ballet. Oh, really? Yes. You have the same subtle undulations, the, the same sinuosity. Uh -huh. <laughs> what are you talking about? Mrs. Wright, walk ahead of us. Just as you were doing. Oh, please. Oh, oh, this is embarrassing. Oh, do it, do it. Show us that same animal grace. <laughs> you mean like this? There. That's it. That's it. You see, Maggie? Yeah, but she's never walked like that before. <laughs> I'll be right back with the cocktails. Make yourself comfortable. Okay, Jane. Bruce, have you got a match? Of course. Thanks. Maggie, did anyone ever tell you that there's something of the Orient about you? Huh? Yes. You're as exotic, as mysterious as the mysterious East itself. Mr. Gordon, would you mind carrying this tray into the living room? My pleasure. Oh, Jane, the efficient housewife. It's incredible. The adjustment of subordinating your exotic personality to your husband's must have been tremendously difficult. Oh, Jane isn't the only one. I had the same trouble. I'm sure you did, Maggie. And you both were wrong in sublimating yourselves. Such sacrifices aren't appreciated by the average man. You must bring your real selves into the open, naked and unashamed. <laughs> I didn't. I did, Jane. 
Oh, Bill. We didn't hear you come in. Yeah, that was pretty obvious. Helen, I'd like you to meet... Maggie, how good to see you again. Thank you. And you. You must be Jane. Mm Mm-hmm. I must be. I do hope we're not interrupting. Oh, no, no. Maggie just brought an old friend of Pete's to dinner, which is now completely ruined. So Maggie's taking the old friend of Pete's to a drive-in for a hamburger. Come on, Drew. Yes, yes, goodbye. Happy to have met all of you. (laughs) I'm sorry Bill and I were so late. I asked him to stop by my hotel so I could freshen up a bit. Yes, I see. Cocktail dress and an orchid. Bill is so thoughtful. I hope you're not hungry. Or maybe you like charcoal. Oh, we'll eat out, honey. I made a reservation for the three of us at the Oak Room. Oh, uh, Bill, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk with you. Hmm? Alone, please. Oh, oh. Uh, you'll excuse us a moment? Certainly. Yes, Jane? I'm not going to dinner with you. Oh, darling. I think it's easier if you and Helen are alone when you tell her that you've changed your mind about her coming into your office. Oh, but I haven't. Oh, Jane, this now, is... Now, listen this... to me, Bill. Darling, when you get to know the girl, now, come on, let's all have dinner together. I'm sorry, Bill. Well, if you change your mind, we'll be at the Oak Room. Bill, please, I want you to tell her... I may be rather late, so don't wait up for me. Good night. Bill! Mother Didn't Tell Me, starring Dorothy McGuire as Jane and Frank Lovejoy as Bill. It's three hours later. Jane has gone to bed, but sleep is impossible. And then she hears Bill's car in the driveway, the front door closed, Bill's footsteps on the stairs, and then at the bedroom door. Good morning. Hmm? Morning. Yes. It's five minutes past midnight. <laughs> well, you've gotten very technical all of a sudden. I suppose Helen had just endless fascinating experiences to tell you. Well, yeah, she told me some things about her internship. We had quite a bit to catch up on. Of course. Naturally. Oh, come on now, honey. Let's not keep this up. I'm willing to drop it whenever you are. Whenever you're ready to tell me that that designing female is out of your life. <laughs> Jane, that's not fair. I've met her. I saw how she was acting toward you. All Dr. Helen Porter wants is to get installed in your office and oh, then install herself... Oh, look herself... now. You know I promised Helen a place with me when she went east to study. All these years, she's relied on my word. And so have I. I happen to be an incurable romantic married to a man who's married to his work. And now that's to include another woman. She'll share your work and your thoughts, and she'll be with you from morning until night, and I'll be more neglected than ever. Neglected? Listen, if you wanted your marriage to be one long honeymoon, why the devil did you marry a doctor? Why didn't you marry some rich idiot who could afford to chase you around the house all day? What? Don't you dare call any man who might marry me an idiot. Now see what your shouting's done. The twins will be awake all night. Okay, I'll go heat their formula. Maybe that'll quiet them. Bill? Yeah? What about Helen? She starts to work in the morning. All right. And so will I. One day of the week I have a maid. Call me back in a couple of hours. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Bill? Bill? What time is it? Ten o'clock. 
o'clock. Oh, he's gone to the office and he didn't even kiss me goodbye. Hmm. I'd better go to work on my man. Miss Ransom, has my husband come to the office yet? Oh, why, yes, Mrs. Wright. He's in consultation with Dr. Porter right now. Oh, with Dr. Porter. I imagine she does need some help in getting started. Oh, no. It's wonderful how she's taken hold. She's so capable. Yes, I know. Uh, would you like to speak to your husband now? No. Just tell him that uh, I'm feeling badly. I- I've just taken my temperature, and it's 103. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't be alone, Mrs. Wright. Well, I, I'm not. The cleaning woman is downstairs. At least I, I hope she came this morning. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm really too weak to talk anymore, Miss Ransom. Goodbye. Oh, let's see. Mm-hmm. My new pink negligee. Lipstick. Mascara. And plenty of perfume. Uh oh, back into bed. Ah. Well, what seems to be the trouble? You! Bill was very busy. Besides, I thought we should become better acquainted. Did Bill send you here? Give me your wrist and stick out your but tongue. I want to stick out your tongue. Oh, 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 oh. As Bill's new associate, I'm to make the routine house call. Routine? Your tongue again. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Perfectly normal. No fever at all. Well, I had one when I called the office. Possibly. Sometimes the fever can be induced temporarily by worry and nervous agitation. Oh, And what would I have to worry about or be agitated about? I'm sure you can answer that better than I, Mrs. Wright. Perhaps you've been under a strain lately. The house and the children. It might be a good idea if Bill sent you away for a little vacation. (laughs) Yes, wouldn't that be convenient? Dr. Porter, you seem so very talented. Surely you've had offers from other doctors or clinics? Oh, yes. There was a clinic in Chicago. But I prefer it here. There's so much I can do. Dr. Porter, I'm sorry I've got other calls to make. But be sure to phone me if your agitation starts up again. Goodbye. Yes? Well, at least you're awake this time. Jane, I was wondering if we couldn't have lunch downtown today. I'm afraid I won't have time. I'm leaving Bill. What? I've had all I can take. If Bill wants to bring another woman into his office and shut me out of his life... Wait a minute, honey. Think it over, please. I know how you feel, and I don't trust Helen either, but you and Bill... I'm sorry, Maggie. I've got to start packing. I'll talk to you in a day or two. Jane! This is Mrs. Roberts. Let me speak to Dr. Wright. It's urgent. Jane? Jane? She's in the kitchen feeding the twins. I came over here as soon as you phoned me, but her mind seems to be made up. But it's ridiculous. It's idiotic. Well, there are bags in the hall and all the baby things. Jane? Mother... Would you phone for a taxi, please? Oh, Jane, what is all this? Just because we had a little argument last night... This is not because of an argument. I've had a talk with your friend, Dr. Porter. You have? About what? If I tried to repeat the conversation, I wouldn't believe it myself. She's as slippery as an eel. But I don't intend to let her take the initiative away from me. Oh, look, if we'll all just sit down and talk like a... No, no, thank you. The children and I will be completely out of your life. Mother, will you call a taxi, please? No. There isn't going to be any taxi until I know where you're going. You can't take my children and head for nowhere. Your children? You barely know them. Well, you two seem to be getting nowhere. I think I might as well call the cab. No, you stay here, Mother. I'll do it. Well, my dear, I'm sorry for you, but I've seen this coming from the day I met you. 
And you've enjoyed waiting for it to happen, haven't you? No. But I couldn't close my eyes to the fact that my son was marrying a romantic fool who'd handicap him personally and professionally. Well, then I'm sure you'll be deliriously happy as the mother-in-law of Dr. Helen Porter. <gasps> oh! I forgot the twins in the kitchen. Mother, I've been trying to get Pete Roberts on the phone. His line is busy. Would you keep trying it for me? Well, what about the taxi? Well, I want to talk to Pete first. He's got a house down at the beach where Jane and the kids can put up for a couple of months. Oh, mother, come quickly. Jane, what's wrong? Oh, oh, the twins. I left them alone, and they've gotten into the ant cave. Oh, look, it's all over their faces. Bill, please tell me what to do. Just get a hold of your nurse. Come on, we're taking them to the hospital. <laughs> Why doesn't Bill come out and tell us how it's going and what's going on? He will as soon as he can, dear. Mother, you used to be a nurse. If the stomach pump doesn't work, can't they, can they do something else? My dear, Bill and his friends know what to do. And so do we. Just pray a little harder. Mother, you... Yes. Remember, they're my grandchildren, too. Bill? Oh, they're okay. They're just worn out by what they've been through. Oh, thank heaven. Then we can take them home right now? Home? Oh, yes, after such a fright. It seems to me the poor little things need the peace and security of their own nursery. Well, that, that's up to Jane. I don't know. I suppose if it's just for the night. Whatever you say. Well, all right. But just for the night. <laughs> now, now, Mary. Meet safe and sound in your own crib. Nothing to worry about. Mommy's here and Daddy's here. Uh, Jane. Yes? Uh, I've arranged for a house for you and the kids. Pete Roberts' place at the beach. Oh, thank you. Uh, you can move in tomorrow. Fine. I'll have a moving van pick up all that stuff. It's too much for a taxi. Yes, I guess it is. Bill! Yes, Mother? Telephone. All right. Oh, oh, Jane. <clears throat> uh, speaking of phone calls... Yes? Helen Porter phoned a few minutes ago. Oh? About the twins? No. No, she's leaving to work in a big clinic in Chicago. Wanted to know if I'd mind. Mm. And do you? Oh, don't be silly. Bill, the phone! Okay. <laughs> Jane, will you please leave the nursery so the children can sleep? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, yes, Mother. Did you hear what Bill said? About Helen? Yes. Do you believe him? I do. Well, why should she suddenly decide to leave town? Because I told her to. You? While we were at the hospital, I phoned Helen. I threatened to tell Bill how she and I had deliberately planned to break up your marriage. Then you really were helping her? Yes, I... I was convinced that Bill would be more successful with Helen, a wife who was in the same profession. But today, when I saw you and Bill with the children, well, I realized I'd overlooked the most important factor in any marriage. Love. Yes. And all of our shouting at each other and all of my jealousy and Bill's anger, they were just different ways of saying to each other, I love you, I love you. And I do, you know. Bill. Oh, darling. I, I'm sorry, baby. I, I got to dash out. That phone call was from Mrs. O'Shanky. Oh, dear. You know she always says it's an emergency. Well, this time she may be right. She's afraid her husband's getting well. Bill, at least kiss me. Yeah, I, I will when I get back. 
That is, if you wait up for me. I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting for you. Always. In a moment, our stars will return. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. After living a life of a moderately successful farmer, Otto Hunderwaddle, with his wife, accepted a job as agricultural advisor to the government of Burma. At first, the Burmese weren't too anxious to work with the Americans, and Otto finally discovered why. They considered him and his wife too old for work. But the Hunderwaddles proved that age had nothing to do with the ability to work. And then the men accepted his help with their drainage and agricultural problems. And Mrs. Hunderwaddle showed the skeptical women how to can food. She was so successful that eventually she and Otto got permission from the Burmese government to build a local cannery. Well, shortly after it was built, however, misfortune struck. Civil war broke out, and the Hunderwaddles and their helpers were forced to abandon their homes. By the time they returned, the cannery was a shambles. But they weren't discouraged. While Otto remained in Burma to help the villagers rebuild their homes, Mrs. Hunderwaddle returned to the United States to raise money for a new cannery. By the time she returned to Burma, she had secured more than enough money and equipment. When last heard from, she and Otto were still helping the Burmese farmers and working in the cannery. For they learned that by helping others, you help your country. Now, here's Mr. Cummings with our stars. And here they are, coming forward for a curtain call. Dorothy McGuire and Frank Lovejoy. (laughs) Well, we can see from tonight's play that it is an advantage for a wife to have a basic understanding of her husband's work. Well, then we're certainly in luck, Irving, with both of us married to actresses. Mm -hmm. I suppose that puts me at a disadvantage again. Seeing as I'm married to a photographer. Oh, no, Dorothy. I imagine you're his favorite subject. You're such a busy actress, Dorothy. What do you do with your spare time? Well, I try to find some time to read. Almost every good book is turned into a movie, and I like to read them first. Well, I like to see the movie first and then read the book. Better tell us what's for next week, Irving. It's one of the 20 grades, Frank, but it also happens to be quite a recent picture. One of 20th Century Fox's great screen successes. And one of the top comedies of all time. It's all about.